There are many regulatory developments in Southeast Asia and for industry, complying with these diverse chemical control legislations can be challenging and confusing. This week at ChemCon Asia 2024, here in Bangkok, authorities and industry will come together and share their regulations, best practices and lessons learned. Curious to learn if all these ingredients in the big melting pot can result in a fusion formula that encourages regulatory cooperation. Something I will discuss with Vietang Le from the Vietnam Chemicals Agency and Gil Perez, originally from the Philippines, but now working for Procter & Gamble in Singapore. Gil, can you provide a bird's eye view of the regulatory implementation level in Southeast Asia? So, actually the 10 different countries in ASEAN is at different levels of implementation of their different chemical legislations. So we start with Brunei, Cambodia, Myanmar and Laos which would be implementing primarily foundational um, chemical legislations like occupational safety, pollution prevention, emergency response, right? And then if you move up through that pyramid of a stepwise uh, chemical management scheme, you would have Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, who would be implementing the higher versions of GHS. And then you would also have Vietnam and Thailand, which we in the industry anticipate probably within the next three or five years would be implementing their own chemical control law, meaning establishing a, a chemical inventory and then having a new chemical substance um, importation manufacturer um, mm. approval system. And then you have Philippines, which is at the highest um, level of implementation, at least within the ASEAN um, region, where they've, they've had a chemical control law for the past more than three decades. But even if they've had this chemical control law um, for the past three decades, they are continually improving it, making changes. So right now they're looking into prioritization of existing chemicals and also looking at uh, methodology and how to arrest, assess the risk of the chemicals. Okay, so a broad variety from a hazardous chemical control all the way up to risk assessments, basically. That's right. Thank you very much for that. Vietnam, what are the key regulations and priorities in Vietnam? Yes, uh, in Vietnam we have the law on chemicals which was established in 2007. It's like an umbrella law for all of the chemical management legislation in Vietnam. So under the law we have degree, circular, national technical standard. So we build a, a legal framework um, and a, Thank for this, after 15 years of the implementation, we have some achievement on the uh, chemical management. But uh, we face some difficulty for the current situation. And we are revising our law on chemicals uh, from uh, this year to the next year. And <coughs> in the new law, we will focus on the four uh, priorities the uh, areas. First is for the, we will support the development of the chemical industry in Vietnam uh, for the sustainable. Uh, and the second one, we will uh, manage the chemical by life cycle. Yeah. The third one is a new policy that we will uh, focus on the hazardous chemical in product. It's quite a new area. And the last thing that we focus on is the uh, uh, safety and security management of the chemicals is uh, our priority for the next uh, future. Thank you. Now, a lot of things in, in store. Uh, I also know that you were in this phase of building uh, the Vietnamese chemical inventory. What is the status of that? Uh, unfortunately, we did uh, many work for the inventory, uh, but because in the current law, uh, there is not enough legal basic for finalize the inventory. So now we post the inventory development and we wait for the new law because in the new law the legislation uh, regulation for the inventory uh, will be more clear and uh, after the establishment of the new law we can redo the inventory. Okay and is that then uh, in 25 or 26? When, yes. when do you expect that? Uh, I think as a law we established in 25, but we have some years to prepare 
So I think we can start the inventory maybe in 2026, from, from 2026. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah, preparation is important and I also know uh, you heavily involved industry where uh, feasible to get their input. Um, so recently Vietnam started also a public consultation on draft amendment of the national technical regulations on safety in production, trading, use, storage and transportation of dangerous chemicals. Can you explain what the focus is of this amendment? Uh, actually the current regulation is quite good. but. In this, there are some uh, regulation is not uh, feasible with the uh, um, reality. For example, uh, the, we require the distance between the eye washing station is quite far. And so from, uh, to, uh, from the reality, the company cannot put many uh, eye uh, washing station. So in the uh, amendment, we just uh, have some mirror uh, uh, chains and uh, um, it's only a technical issue. Yeah. Okay, and Gil, do you know companies or industry that are uh, participating in this uh, public consultation? Yes, definitely. So a lot of the local industry associations in Vietnam plus you know as long as they have satellite offices in Vietnam have actually attended at least I think two uh, public consultations um, and at least feedback from my industry colleagues is some of their questions have been addressed some I think have yet to be um, deciphered depending on how the legislation uh, changes uh, progresses because um, it's still a, a, a legislative framework, right? So the technical implementing rules, I think, will come in maybe after a year or so. And I presume there's going to be a follow-up uh, public consultations for the industry to participate. Okay. And um, Vietang, are, is only local industry allowed to participate or is it open for also companies not based in Vietnam? Actually, the consultation is for all the stakeholders. Uh, we are uh, open for the center, uh, uh, local authority, the domestic and also international company. Because we public uh, the draft uh, amendment in uh, the website of the government, of the ministry and of the, our agency. And uh, all of the stakeholders have at least 60 days to provide their comments. So, uh, and any stakeholder can make a comment for the revision. Yeah. Gil, back to you. Can you sketch the key challenges, opportunities and best practices for industry in complying with all these different regulations in Southeast Asia? Sure. So actually, first and foremost, I think we need to recognize that industry and the authorities have the same common goal, right? So protection of human health and the environment. So coming up from that common understanding, it's much easier for the industry to really partner with the authorities in enabling that. And how does the industry essentially do that? One is participating in the ASEAN regulatory cooperation platform where we're able to have a common avenue where we could dialogue with the regulators. And just imagine industry having that mini dialogues per country, right? So the advantage of the ARCP is we have a common platform where we could dialogue with all the uh, authorities across ASEAN. And um, one of the most effective strategies that the industry has done is actually to offer capacity and cap capability building. So essentially, we've done a lot of um, trainings on risk assessment, chemical prioritization, JHS implementation, mutual recognition. So we think that the more we share practical experiences, mm -hmm and best practices across the globe, the more we're able to partner with the authorities in applying these in their local context. Okay, so you already mentioned eh, the Asian Regulatory Cooperation Platform. Can you also uh, explain the objectives of the platform? Yes, so one of the main objectives of the platform is really to avoid non-tariff technical barriers to trade, right? So, because mm -hmm. we recognize that it's not always the regulation or the tariff regulations that uh, prevent you know, trading among uh, partners. 
but it's the differences in the technical requirements. So as long as we converge, and when I say converge, it's not, it's not necessarily coming up with a harmonized requirement because we recognize the diversity across ASEAN. So it's really recognizing the differences across the, the 10 different ASEAN countries and having that mutual understanding and recognition that even if their requirements are different, they are open to accept those differences. Okay, Vietang, does the Vietnam Chemicals Agency also actively participate and contribute to the platform? Yes, of course, uh, we are the active member of the platform that we uh, attend uh, all of the meeting of the platform and also we provide the input for, um, uh, to the platform uh, sharing the uh, current situation of the legal framework and also the uh, 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 direction how it means a plan in the future that we uh, would, uh, would like to do uh, with our legislation and the platform is also our uh, opportunity to listen from the other country uh, for uh, the common uh, of, of them uh, to Vietnam to enhance our uh, chemical management system. So I think the platform is uh, very useful for the ASEAN country. Okay, yes. and, and you talk about interaction also between you and other authority peers. Uh, what kind of best practices do you get out of other countries? The best practice that uh, we learn is to uh, harmonize the legislation in the region. Because uh, I, uh, I do understand that the country in the re uh, region have the different level of the de development, so they have uh, different level of legislation. But uh, we, we, we learn and uh, listen to them for many of the international regulation, especially the GHS implementation and the uh, 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 CBI, the confidential business information, because it's one of the most, I think, the most uh, difficult for the uh, foreign investment to to, to, to uh, do the, the activity in our country. Yes. Okay, thank you. Gil, what is the strategy of the platform to enhance regulatory cooperation in the region and what kind of best practices do you recognize? Right, so one is creating that common platform for the authorities and the industry to interact with each other. Because before ARCP back in 2015, we didn't have this. So the authorities tend to operate in silos but now that we have the platform, they are much aware and they're able to exchange notes and learnings uh, from each other. Um, in terms of best practices, what has worked well for us in the past is really the capacity building, right? Bringing in the best practices from outside the region, because um, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, right, in, in, in the region. So essentially bringing in uh, the expertise, sometimes we even bring in um, technical um, toxicologists, mm -hmm. environmental experts into our uh, workshops so that they could really help train um, our authorities and industry, like how to do risk assessment, chemical prioritization, and, and what has worked and what are also the watch outs so that they don't repeat the same um, mistakes. Okay, um, one of the topics you already mentioned uh, is the GHS, uh, the Global Harmonized System. Uh, do you think that GHS harmonization in Southeast Asia is feasible or are the current differences between the, all these countries too big? So in terms of the landscape, we have a few countries which have none or at, only at the beginning of um, really implementing GHS in their country. And we have those that are a little bit advanced like implementing version four, version six, but the platform has actually done a lot of um, training and advocacy to bring the region into at least ver JHS version seven, right? So that's the vision um, that we're advocating for. But then we also recognize that some are more uh, aggressive. They want to move up to version eight or even higher. Um, so because of that difference, those differences, um, the platform has, has also moved to 
advocating for mutual recognition. Meaning, if your country is implementing a higher version, it's okay to accommodate lower versions from your other trading partners so that you know trade still moves across the region. Okay, and Vietang, what is the Vietnamese perspective on GHS? Um, we um, now we are quite open for the GHS uh, implementation in Vietnam because we uh, in the current law we don't mention about any kind of uh, version in Vietnam. So we apply from version two to the new new list version. So uh, they have two hand. One hand is easier for the importer because they can apply any version uh, uh, in Vietnam, but the other hand is very difficult for the management and control. So as Gil said, we hope that in the new law we can have uh, the specific regulation on the GHS, at least from the version 7, because mm -hmm. it's harmonized in the re region. Mm -hmm. My personal uh, idea that I also support the idea to harmonize all the GHS in the uh, regional uh, because it strongly support for all the, the uh, members uh, to have the harmonize of the leg legislation. Yes. Okay, so many things ahead. Uh, we're currently at Chemcon Asia 2024. Let's Fast forward to Chemcon Asia 2026. Then you both can share the achievements of the platform and the latest news on Vietnam. What achievements would you like to present at Chemcon Asia 2026 and why? And what progress do you hope to make the coming years? So let me start with uh, the platform. So we've been actually advocating for recognition under the ACCSQ, which is the ASEAN Consultative Council for Quality standards and quality, right? Um, to be recognized as a working group under that um, ACCSQ. So essentially what that happened, what, when that ha recognition happens is we will have a more uh, structured platform where both regulators and industry can, can interact with each other. They can come up with more regional wide um, requirements, okay, and as well as greater commitment from authorities to really engage. Because right now it's all voluntary. We've developed a lot of guidelines, but they still remain voluntary up until perhaps when we have that recognition from ACCSQ. Okay, and Vietang, what is the latest news to be presented at Chemcon Asia 2026? Uh, yes, it's uh, our new law. Uh, the new law is also our new willing to uh, upgrade our legislation uh, framework for chemical management to harmonize uh, the regional and international uh, legislation. And I hope in the coming year when the new law is come into force, uh, you can see uh, um, the, uh, our legislation green um, to comply with the international standard and support uh, the industry uh, as much as we can. Thank okay, you. Vietang and Gil, thank you both for your contributions. I see a fruitful fusion of Southeast Asian regulations on the horizon. So it's safe to conclude that this week all paths lead to Bangkok. And I'm sure this paved the way for more Asian regulatory cooperation. <laughs>